Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today. To always, always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now, just to give him the thanks right now. Just to give him the praise right now. Just to give him the glory right now. Hallelujah. Today is the day that the Lord has made. And I am so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it. My brothers, my sisters, praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing because our Heavenly Father God, the one that we praise, the one that we worship, is still on the throne. He is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in every last one of our life who loves him, who seek him, and who glorify him each and every day. I want y'all to get in the habit of praising Jesus. Some of y'all, the only time that you want to get in the habit of praising Jesus and the only time that Jesus even hear from you is when you want something, you're in need of anything, or you don't got yourself in your trouble. And once he comes through for you, what do you do? You bail out on him again, which he already knew that you was going to do anyway. Do you see how much our God loves us anyway? Even though he know that we're going to bail on him. Do he deserve that? No. Look at many times when he got you out of trouble. Look at how many times he made a way out of no way. Look at how many times when he got you out of that jam. Look at how many times he got you out of that sticky situation. Look at how many times when you put yourself in a certain situation that he got yourself out of. Doesn't he deserve the thanks and praise and glory? Look at many times so many people told you no. But Jesus told you yes. Look how many times when everybody else walked out of your life, did you wrong, they slammed the door on you, they stabbed you in the back, who was always right there with you, walking with you, talking to you, caring for you, wiping the tears off your eyes, consoling you, giving you the strength that you need each and every day. Wasn't it Jesus? I think about times in my life, my brothers, my sisters, when I was out there in the world, messing up. When I was out there in the streets, when the goons was after me, when the enemy was after me, it was Jesus who was protecting me the whole time. When the police were chasing after me, it was Jesus who made a getaway, made an escape for me. Even though I was doing wrong, even though I was doing dirt, but my God still made a way for me. He was still was protecting me. He still had me shielded in this bubble the whole time. And the same thing that he did for me, he did for y'all too. So that's why I thank him the way I do. That's why I praise him the way I do because a lot of people didn't make it out of them streets like I made it. A lot of people didn't make it out of that traffic jam. A lot of people didn't make it when they put themselves in a certain situation. But God made a way for me and God made a way for you. So the point I'm making right now today, my brothers and my sisters, you need to open your mouth right now today because there's not one person on this planet called Earth right now today can never say, can never say that Jesus has never got them out of a situation that Jesus was never there for them. So I don't know how long you got to think back. Some of you might got to think too far. Some of you might not today. You got to think a little farther than others. But think about that one time, that one incident. You didn't know how it was going to work out. You didn't know how you was going to make it happen. You didn't know how you was going to get out of that situation. Didn't Jesus come through? Didn't he wake you up today? Didn't he breathe life inside of your body today? Didn't he give you another chance and another opportunity today? Didn't he give you a second chance today? Didn't he bless you with your health and your strength today? If he did that today, he gave you a blessing today. He gave you a breakthrough today. And he also gave you a miracle today. So doesn't Jesus deserve the thanks and praise and glory for it right now today? Yes, he does. That's why praise is so important. It's not an on and off switch thing. It is an everyday thing. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, I come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for this beautiful, blessed day. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this chance of a lifetime. I thank you, Father God, for allowing me to be the overseer of your flock right now today. I thank you for this beautiful word, for this anointing message, God, that you are about to speak to us right now today, Father God. Father God, your words tells us, tells us in the book of Matthew, verses 18 and 19, when two or more gather in your name, 
that you are in the midst. So, Father God, I know for a fact that you're in the midst of our homes right now. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now. I know that you're in the midst of our telephones right now, or our desktops right now, our laptops right now, our iPad, or whatever gadget that we are using, that we are watching your channel, your ministry on YouTube. We know that you're in the midst right now. Father God, I'm asking you in your name right now today, Father God, for you to have your way with us, God. Father God, we take no credit that's what about to go down in your house today, God. Because Father God, your word says your house is the house of prayer. Your house is the house of praise. Your house is the house of worship. God, we are praying, we are worshiping, and we about to glorify and shout out your holy name in your house, God. Father God, I'm, I'm asking you right now today for you to move through us right now today, to touch us right now today, God. Father God, you know every area of our body. You know what we are hurting at, and you know what we are suffering at, God. And Father God, I know that you're going to come through. I know that you're going to make a way out of no way because I know that's not too hard. I know that's not too difficult for you, Jesus. Father God, as we lift your name up to the highest high right now, God. Father God, as we elevate and praise your name, God, to give you the thanks and praise and glory in your house because, God, this is your house. Father God, we coming to you right now today to let you know that we are available to praise and worship you, God. We are available for us to continue to, to serve you, God. Father God, we are available for us to do what you have called us to do, what you chose us to do, and also considered us to do. Father God, thank you for allowing us to have a seat at your table right now today, God, which you already prepared for every last one of our enemies, God. Oh, Father God, we ask you to let your spirit move through us right now today, God. Father God, we need your presence in your house right now today, God. Father God, I'm asking you in your name right now today for you to do a new thing in my sister's life, for you to do a new thing in my brother's life, for you to do a new thing in my life right now today. Hallelujah. And we just thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this word. We thank you, Father God, that we're able to fellowship together in your house today, God, because this is your house that you built. This is your house that we give you the thanks in. This is your house where we give you the praise in. This is your house where we give you the glory in, God. This is your house where we are magnified and we are exalting your holy name in your house. Your house that you built, your house that we love to come and praise and seek you, Jesus. Father God, I know that you're about to do something different in your house today, Father God. Father God, we came in for a reason and we came in for a purpose. Father God, we're not leaving your house until we get what we came to get from you. We came to get our strength from you. We come to get wisdom from you, knowledge and understanding. And Father God, Lord, we ask of you what we need from you, God. We know that you're going to supply it, God. That you're the God, you're going to supply all our needs according to your riches and your glory, God. Supply my sisters right now what they need. Supply my brothers right now for what they need. Supply me and supply your ministry because you know exactly what we need, God. And Father God, I'm telling you right now today, we keep it real with you right now today, Jesus. We ain't taking no for an answer. We have came too far for us to leave here empty-handed. We are not leaving your house empty-handed today. We let you know that for a reason, Jesus. So, Father God, you might well go ahead and do what you're supposed to do for us right now, God. Because, Father God, we ain't leaving here until we get what we need to get from you. In your holy, precious, mighty name. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out. To give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I just can't thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I can't thank you enough for this word. I can't thank you enough for this anointing message. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, for the air that we're able to breathe right now today. I can't thank you enough, Father God, for our help and our strength, for your grace and your mercy. I can't thank you enough, Jesus, for your words and your promises. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on our table, the clothing shoes that you have put on our back. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, for the whole the spirit that is moving through us right now today. I can't think of the angels that is 
join us in praise and worship right now today. I just came thinking of Jesus, how you moving mountains on our behalf right now today, and we don't even realize it right now. I came thinking for the vision. I came thinking for the provision. I just came thinking of Jesus because you making a way out of no way. I just came thinking of Jesus, how you still guiding us and directing our every footstep, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Father God, for who you are and what you have done and what you're about to do in our life right now today. Glory to God. I just can't thank you enough, Father God, because you more than enough, God. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, because we are victorious because of your word say so, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, because we're in your house to give you some thanks and praise and glory right now. Father God, I know that you're making a way out of no way, Jesus. Thank you for the vision and thank you for the provision. I just can't thank you enough for our blessing right now today, Jesus. I break you right now today, Jesus. I will anoint right now today, Jesus. I deliver right now today, Jesus. I'm more than enough right now today, Jesus. I double portion right now today, Jesus. I just can't thank you for our harvest that we're reaping this year, Jesus. I just can't thank you for the open doors. I can't thank you for the door that you have closed. I just can't thank you enough, Father God, for the strangers that we about to meet. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough. Amen. Amen. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I need y'all to hold y'all hammers up. And I need y'all to repeat that to me. And I need y'all to say it. Like you mean it. This is my hammer. That breaks down everything. That is in front of me. His words and promises. Are consuming fire. That comforts me. I can do all things. By this hammer. That strengthens in me. Because of God's words. I am victorious. And not a victim. I am victorious. And not a victim. And you are. And if you ready for God's word. Let the church say amen. Amen. I'm telling tell you, my brothers and my sisters, this word today is going to move somebody today. And I'm telling you, it touched me in a mighty way last night when God spoke this to me. And he put it in my spirit. I've just been meditating all day. And I tell you, my brothers and my sisters, somebody need to hear this word. This word, this message is for somebody today. I don't know who it is. But it's for you right now today. I need you to be honest with yourself. And tell Jesus, I know you are talking to me. Amen. Amen. So can you please turn your Bible to Luke chapter 22. And we're going to read verses 54 through 62. That's Luke chapter 22. And we're going to read verses 54 through 62. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give him thanks and praise and glory in his house. Thank you, Jesus. They seized him. They led him away and took him to the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are the one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another uh, asserted certainly this fellow was with him. He is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you are talking about. Just as we were speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times and went outside and wept bitterly. 
Mm-mm-mm. And my message today is we turned our back on him when he never turned his back against us. And every last one of us on this planet called Earth has turned our back on Jesus more than one time. Everybody on this planet called Earth have a little bit of Peter inside of them. And if you don't have no Peter inside of you, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now today, you don't told your first life for the day, and I'm going to pray for you right now today. Every last one of us has a little bit of Peter in us. Peter denied Jesus because Peter was so caught up in the world. Peter was so caught up in the flesh, and Peter denied the spirit. Look how many times that Peter, they asked Peter, do you know him? And Peter said no. And that's what some of y'all do right now today. The moment when pain come, the moment when suffering come, the moment when struggle come, the moment when hardship come, you take off running. You act like you don't know Jesus. You act like you never heard his name. You act like you never follow him. But how many times have Jesus ever turned his back against you? How many times has Jesus ever turned his back against us? Now, one time, he never done it. But we always have the audacity to take our running and lead through. We have the audacity to tell people we don't know who he is when we are going through something. What's the difference between you going through good times and you going through bad times? There's no difference at all because Jesus is still on the throne. He is still performing miracles. He is still performing wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. So there's no difference in it. But you have the audacity not to have his back. But he always, always have my back. Think about the time when you want something, Jesus. We sit there, we are pray, we are worship. We even go down and start kicking down the church doors, bust down the church doors. We the loudest one in church. So Jesus can hear our voice. So Jesus can hear our song. So Jesus can hear us praise him. And the moment that Jesus come through and he blesses what we do, we turn that back against him. And he already know what we're going to do before he even give it to us. But do he deserve that when he always have our back? Look how many times people turn their back against us. And now how many times has Jesus ever turned his back against you? How many friends have turned their back against you? And how many times has Jesus turned his back against you? Look at how your family turn their back against you. Jesus never turned his back against you. Look how your in-laws turn their back against you. But Jesus never turned his back against you. Look how the job that you was going for and praying so much. When they get tired of you, when they use you up, they turn their back against you. But Jesus never, ever turned his back against you. When Peter realized what he did, Jesus looked at him. Because Jesus already knew what Peter's going to do. And Peter looked at Jesus and said, I don't mess up. Peter denied Jesus because Peter was too caught up in the flesh. Peter was too caught up in the, in the world. Peter was not caught up in the spirit. I mean, I remember my brothers and my sisters, how many times I turned my back against Jesus. I've done it so many times. So many times. The moment I got myself in trouble. And I said, Jesus, if you get me out of this, this, this trouble, I promise you I'm going to do this. I promise you I was going to do that. And the moment he got me out of trouble, what I do? I bailed on him. I had that Peter syndrome inside of me. I had that Peter spirit inside of me. But don't mean it, it doesn't matter how many times I turned my back against Jesus. He never turned his back against me. It doesn't matter how many times I turned my back against Jesus. When I needed him, when I needed to talk to him, he was still right there with open arms. Ready and willing to take me back in. Because he knew I had that Peter syndrome inside of me. He knew I had that Peter spirit inside of me. It's a lot of Peters right now that's watching this channel right now. It's a lot of Peters right now today that they really have turned their back against Jesus. For what? For what? Now I need y'all to really ask yourself this question. How many times has Jesus turned his back against you? 
How many times has Jesus ever denied you? He never done it. He never done it. But we do it every single time. Why is that? My brothers and my sisters. Why is that? And you, I can just look at Peter's face. It's like, man, I turn my back on my best friend. I turn my back on my father. I turn my back on my person who was always there for me and who was there with me. So if you look at the if you look at the last part of the of the word, it says when he disowned him three times and he went outside and he wept bitterly because he broke Jesus' heart. How many of us right now today has broken Jesus' heart so many times? I know I have. I need y'all to keep it real with your stuff now. How many of you have broken Jesus' heart? If you're if you're a person right now today. And you have the audacity to sit there and say that you never broke Jesus' heart. I'm going to pray for you again because you just told your second lie. Every last one of us has broken his heart more than one time. More than one time. Now ask yourself, how many times have he ever broke your heart? Not one time. It doesn't matter how many times we broke his heart. It doesn't matter how many times we left him hanging. It doesn't matter how many times we disown him. It doesn't matter how many times we turned our back against him. But he's still right here opening us with welcome arms. And he still loves us the same. And he still treats us the same. So you know when you serve, when you got a God like that, the only thing that you want to do is thank and praise him. How many of y'all right now today as you, when you broke Jesus' heart? How many of you right now today when you turn your back against Jesus? How many of you right now today when you disown Jesus? How many how many of y'all went outside and you cried and you wept bitterly for the wrong that you have done? I have more than one time. I'm not expecting anybody to keep it real because I know somebody right now today you're sugarcoating it right now. You're trying to play this tough man role. You're trying to play this tough woman role. But I know that you cried. And if you haven't cried, there's something wrong with you. But what I love about Jesus the most, he went back to Peter. And he asked Peter, not one time, not two times, not three times, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Jesus, I love you more than anything. And when Jesus knew that Peter felt bad for what he did, when Jesus understood Peter, and he understood why Peter did it, which he already knew Peter was going to do it, because he told Peter before it even happened, Peter, that you was going to disown me. He already told us from the beginning, son, you're going to disown me. Daughter, you're going to disown me. The moment I open this door for you, you're going to forget about me. The moment I give you this little blessing, you're not going to praise me no more. You're not going to worship me no more. He already knew what you was going to do before you did. But one thing I knew about Peter, Peter's heart was still in the right place. With Jesus, everybody's heart is still not right in the right place with Jesus. So when Jesus came back to him, he didn't ask Peter, Peter, why you do that to me? Peter, why you break my heart? He asked Peter, do you really love me? And Peter said, yes. He said, Peter, do you really love me? Peter said, yes. He said, Peter, do you really love me? Peter said, yes, more than anything. And Jesus reinstated Peter's ministry right then and there. Why do you think Jesus reinstated Peter's ministry? Because Jesus knew Peter's heart. He knew Peter felt bad. He knew Peter went outside and he cried and he felt Peter's pain. He felt Peter's emotion. He felt Peter's dishonesty. He felt everything that Peter felt so ashamed for what he did. So that's why he went back. But Jesus sent me here tonight to tell somebody right now today that he has reinstated your marriage. He has brought your marriage back together because he know that you love him more than anything. It's like he did Hosea. Look what he told Hosea. He told Hosea to marry a prostitute. But when he told Hosea to reconcile with his wife, he told Hosea, he said, if you love me like you said that you love me, that you will reconcile with your wife and you will accept those outside kids as they were yours. So Jesus told me to tell you right now today, he has just fixed and reinstated your marriage because he know that you love him. 
I don't know who God's talking to right now today, but somebody's marriage is here right now. Somebody's marriage is fixed right now. Somebody's marriage is being re has been reinstated by Jesus because Jesus knows that the love that you have for him. He told me that your health has been reinstated because he knows that you was trusting him. He told me that somebody's business has been reinstated because he knows that you love him. He told me that somebody's ministry has been reinstated because that he knows that you love him. He told me that somebody's financial situation has been reinstated because he knows the love that you have for him. So when I said that we have some Peter inside of us, we have some Peter inside of us that when we disown Jesus, we also have some Peter inside of us when we turn our back against Jesus. But we also have some Peter inside of us because Jesus knows our heart. Jesus would never chose Peter as a 12 disciple if he didn't know Peter's heart. Peter was not perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We make mistakes. So that's why we repent of our sins to let Jesus know Jesus Please forgive us for our sins. Please forgive us for our wrongdoing. Father God, I'm asking you right now today, please forgive me. Please forgive my please forgive my brothers. Please forgive my sisters. For any wrong thing that we've done right now today, God, if it was not right and pleasing in your eye, if it was not right and pleasing in your heart, please forgive us, God. Wash us clean. Purify us right now today, God. And Father God, I want to say thank you for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you for cleaning us up and thank you for washing us clean right now today. Peter asked for forgiveness. That's why Jesus went back to him. Somebody asked for forgiveness for the wrong they did in their marriage. That husband could have did something wrong. But that husband asked for forgiveness. That's why Jesus reinstated that marriage. Their wife did something wrong. That's why Jesus reinstated that marriage. Some of you right now today, you've been going through pain. You've been going through suffering. You're going through struggle and you took off. And when you went back to Jesus, I got to come back correct. And Jesus said, he just reinstated your love. He has reinstated your grace and your mercy. He's reinstated favor. He has reinstated your blessing and your breakthrough and your miracle because of your love, because you came back and you came back correct. I had to come back correct. Because I got tired of breaking Jesus' heart. I had to come back correct. Because I got tired of using him when I wanted something. I turned my back. But when I came back correct, Jesus started using me. When I came back correct, I had never known that Jesus wanted me to minister in his ministry. It would never happen if I didn't come correct. The second point I'm making right now today, are you willing to come correct with Jesus right now today? So Jesus can reinstate whatever it is that you lost, whatever it is that you turned your back against on him on. Jesus would never went to Peter if Peter didn't go outside and he wept bitterly. Jesus would never came back to Peter if Peter didn't ask for forgiveness. Jesus would never came back to Peter if Peter didn't come correct. Peter came correct. The third thing, are you willing to come correct right now today? So Jesus can reinstate, reinstate that. Jesus reinstated Peter's ministry because Peter came correct. Jesus knew Peter hard. You can fool me. You can fool anybody else. But one person that you cannot fool is Jesus. He's not no Nintendo. He's not no, um, no, no PlayStation, no Atari, no Playboy, or whatever video game that you want to call it. He is not that you cannot plug him up and turn him off and on when you want to. He is God today. He was God yesterday. He's going to be God forevermore. He knows exactly what your heart is up against. He already knows what your heart is feeling. He knows if your heart is really sincere for what you've done. He knows. He knows, he knows, he knows. And he knew Peter hard. That's why he went back to Peter. That's why he asked him three times. He knew Peter was sincere the first time. But he wanted to hear, just like Peter disowned him three times, he wanted to hear, I love you three times. The third thing before I close, are you willing to tell Jesus three times a day that you love him? Are you willing to tell Jesus three times right now today, I'm sorry? Are you willing to tell Jesus three times right now today, please forgive me for the wrong I've done? Are you willing to do that? We all have a choice to make. Nobody ain't forcing you. But if you want Jesus to come back and ask you the same thing he asked Peter, 
You got to be, your heart have to be right and you have to come correct. Are you willing to do that right now today? My brothers, my sisters, I believe somebody right now today is willing to come correct. I believe right now today that Jesus is about to speak to somebody right now today. And he's going to ask you the same three things that he asked Peter. Do you love me? And he's going to test your heart. And when he knows your heart is right like Peter's, he's going to reinstate whatever it is that was lost, what was broken. He's going to reinstate it right now. He's going to fix it right now. He's going to heal it right now. He's going to repair it right now. It's already at the shop right now. It's already next in line to be fixed, to give back to you. Are you willing to ask for forgiveness? It's time for you to get right with Jesus right now today. It's time for you to come correct, my brothers, my sisters. We all have done them wrong. We all have turned that back against him. Every last one of us has broken his heart more than one time. But it's time for us to come correct. Because no matter how many times we broke in our heart, we broke his heart, he still loves us the same. He still treats us the same. That's why I praise him the way I do. That's why I'm in love with him the way I am. Because when I got correct, I said, Jesus, I never turn my back against you again. I never break your heart again. Because I know how they made you feel. Because I remember when people broke my heart and done me wrong. It didn't feel right. It didn't feel easy. So I look at how many times I've done it. I know it didn't feel right to you. And I know it was not easy. But you still loved me the same. You still welcomed me back home with open arms. And you still knew my name by name. And I thank you for that, Jesus. Thank you for reinstating my ministry. Thank you for reinstating my marriage. Thank you for reinstating my finances, my health, my dreams, and my family. Thank you, Jesus. And I know that you done because you know my heart. And you know I had that Peter love syndrome. You know I love you. It's like Peter loved you. Even though I turned my back against you. Even though I broke your heart. Even though I disowned you a couple times. You still reinstated because I still had that same love that Peter had for you. Because I've been following you, Jesus. And I trust you. Thank you, Jesus, for coming through for my brothers today. Thank you, Jesus, for coming through for my sister today. Thank you, Jesus, for reinstating somebody's situation today. And I want to say glory, hallelujah. I thank you right now. I worship your holy name right now today, Jesus. I want to say thank you, hallelujah. Get ready. Jesus coming through for you right now today. Amen. Amen. This word for you, I need you to give Jesus some thanks and praise and glory in the house right now today. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today by us praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them or seen them before. Prayer changes things and prayer does help. This is every minister of I love y'all. Stay blessed. Amen.